Stephanie, it's me, Tom Coder. Hope all's well. Wanted to let you know that I got uh, clearance to do the blog. Uh, I'm sorry, the, not the blog, the uh, webcast. The, <laughs> I'm going to mess this whole thing up. You know, the interview over the radio, whatever we're calling it. Uh, podcast. The podcast. So now that we know Reckonings is a podcast, Let's peel back the curtain a little bit on why I created it. I've long had an idea that the change I want to see happens in people's hearts and minds. Which begs the question, how do people change their hearts and minds? How do we shift our political views on criminal justice, abortion, and gun control? How do we overcome racism and homophobia? How do we recover from alcoholism and cocaine addiction? And that's essentially what Reckonings is, an exploration of how people change. One thing I've learned is that people don't tend to change by direct assault because most of us believe in whatever we're doing. Even in the most extreme cases, most of us do what we do to satisfy human desires we all share for love and belonging and self-actualization. Former white supremacist Daniel Gallant from episode eight backs me up here. I would challenge, as I have challenged people, to look at why they're doing what they're doing and why they believe what they believe. So are you in this to hurt people? And if you are, well, then good on you. You're achieving what you're trying to achieve. But in my experience, most of the people in the white supremacist movement, their goal isn't to just go out and hurt people. Their goal is to be a part of something righteous, something that's good. Are you achieving that goal? So in order to dig into how people change, I really have to ask why people do what they do and why they believe what they believe. And in exploring how people change in this way, it's actually me who's being changed. I spent more time talking to more people who are more different from me than ever in my life, and my capacity for compassion is growing. It's like, Stephanie, can you really have compassion for a former white supremacist? And it's like, okay, uh uh-huh, okay, okay, yes, I'm listening. Okay, I, I don't have compassion for what Daniel did, but I do have compassion for why he did it. I'm Stephanie Lepp. I couldn't do this without you. Otherwise, I would just be talking to myself. So thank you for listening to Reckonings.